All right, here's what we'll do. You guys know how to graph the angles. Now we're going to graph the points, all right? Because at, I told you guys at the end of this unit, I'm going to have you do graphs on these, and you got to be able to graph points to get a full graph, all right? So the first thing I just want to show you is you guys are usually used to X comma Y plotting it on the coordinate grid. That's what you guys are used to your whole career. Now, it, when we do it on polar, it's going to be in this form, R comma theta. Theta is just the angle measure, which you guys know how to find. R, I'll talk about in a second, all right? But for now, can you take a look at 1A here? See how it says plot this point, 3 comma pi over 4? I just want you to graph the angle pi over 4 for me right now because you have practice in that. It's in radians. Anybody remember in radians what we go by? Pi over 12s, right? So that 4 is not a 12. How can I make it into a 12? Multiply top and bottom by 3, yeah. So when I multiply top and bottom by 3, this point's going to be 3 comma 3 pi over 4. So can you graph that angle? 12, sorry, 12. Can you graph that angle for me? 3 pi over 12, just like you did the last two days for me. So remember, we always start on the positive side of the x-axis. We go pi over 12, so we count three of them. 1, 2, 3. All right, so there's the angle. Any issues there? Now let me talk about the R value, all right, which in this case is 3. This black dot right in the middle is called the pole. Not, it's not necessary you need to know that, but that R value is how many the distance away from the pole on the angle. So I have a 3 here, so I count literally three circles out, and that's going to be where my point's going to be. So I'm going to go, ready, one, two, three. There's the point. Okay, there's the point three comma pi over four. Now, I just want to make it clear. I'm going to keep doing it, and you, you don't have to. The angle is not necessary. All right, I just wanted you guys to clearly see why I'm putting it on the pi over four, but get rid of the angle. That's all I need is that point plotted. So you don't need the actual angle. I'm gonna keep graphing them so you guys can see, and maybe it might be a good idea for the next couple for you guys to do that too. But when you graph points, I don't expect the angle to be drawn, okay? So going to the next one, two comma 135. Uh, all right, we go by what now? We're in degrees. We go by... We go by pi over 12s if we're in radians, but if we're in degrees, each mark goes by 15s, all right? 15, so let's graph. I'm going to keep graphing, 135. Let's see, I know that's 90 at the top. So one, two, three after that. One, two, three, yep. And then the R value is 2, which means I go 2 units away from the pole, the middle. And that's 2 circles away. So 1, 2. Here would be my point right now. One, two. Not too bad. It's a little tougher, though. Any issues here? Again, you don't need to graph the angle when you graph the point. I'm just showing you it so you can clearly see why I'm putting it there. Uh, all right, now we got a problem. All right, so let's graph the angle first, 3 pi over 2. Multiply top and bottom by 6, right, because it's at a 12. So I'm going to go negative 3, 18 pi over 12. So go ahead, take, your, take a minute. I'm going to get you guys rulers here for this problem. We'll see why. In case you need them, I'm not saying you it's will need them. them, in case you need them here. And Amanda, carbon copy? It's actually going to be your sister. <laughs> <laughs> 
Okay, so everyone find where 18 pi over 12 was. I'm hoping it was down here. That's where it should have been, right? Okay, now clearly what do we see about the R value that we had the last two problems? It's negative. And I can't, you know, can't be a negative direction. So instead, ready, when the R value is negative, I go on the opposite side of the angle and graph it. The total opposite, so 180 degrees in the other direction. So here's my angle. I'm going to go in the opposite direction when my R value is negative. One, two, that is where my point is. Okay, so I go on the total opposite side of my, where my angle is. Only when the R value is negative, I'll go on the opposite side. All right, can we handle both? R value negative and the angle being negative. Well, let's get that angle out of 12 first. So multiply top and bottom by three. So negative one comma negative three pi over 12. Be careful what direction am I going now? Counterclock, it's clockwise, right? Clockwise, so one, two, three. So there is negative three pi over 12. Now I notice, now I notice the R value is negative, so I go in the opposite direction. That's why I don't know, I always have a tough time seeing that. Maybe you guys are a little bit younger, better eyes, I don't know, but that's why I gave you the ruler in case you needed to line it up. Totally opposite here. So make sure you go just one to the opposite of what that right there. So there's my point. Comfortable graphing points before I go on to something else. So if it's a negative R value, I go on the opposite side of my angle. And again, you don't have to graph the angle. That's not neat. That's not required. I think it helps though, as you guys are rookies, you get a little better at it. All right. Can you plot both those points for me now? Go ahead. A little on your own activity here. Plot both those points on your own. No, we don't, because we're just graphing. I'm not, uh -huh. I, because, Jared, I'm not asking you to graph an angle. I'm just asking you to graph a point now. So, no, I don't, because remember, the angles don't even matter. Okay. 
All right, eventually, I'm hoping you guys all get pretty darn good at this. You know, I don't want the angles, especially when we start graphing the figures. Okay. All right, I don't want the angles in there. It's just so you guys can see where it goes. You guys notice anything? It should have been the same point you plotted, hopefully. I'm hoping you didn't plot two different points, because remember, negative two means I go on the opposite. Take a look. Here's 16 pi over 12 right here. But it's negative two, so I needed to go in the opposite direction, two units, and that's where I ended up on the same point. So are we okay on how we ended up at the same point? Because I'm going to ask you guys to create points that land on the same spot now. Any issues yet? Okay, here we go now. 7, 140. Go ahead and graph it. And then I have a question for you. 7, 140. Can you do 140? No. It's not divisible by. But we can kind of put it in where it kind of should be. So that should be. So it's between what? I got 90, 105, 105, 120, 135. And then what's next? 150. All right. So it's going to be somewhere in between there. That's fine. And then seven, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Okay. All right, here's what I need your help with. And there could be multiple answers up here. Which one of these four or which ones of these four choices up here would also land at the same spot as 7140? Okay, which ones? And I don't want you to graph it. We're going to do it algebraically with your calculators. All right, ready. I started with 7140. How can I get a point again that lands in the same exact spot? Think about all your knowledge here. I could keep seven and go all the way around. And how many degrees would I be adding on? I'm just going, staying in the same spot. I'm just going to go all the way around and land at the same spot again. How many degrees did I go? 360, right? So go ahead, add 360 to 140. And what do we end up with? 500. Okay, that's not a choice. That's okay. I could have went 360 in one direction and I could have went 360 in another, which would have been not positive, but negative 360. So everyone go ahead, 140 minus 360. That point could also be seven comma negative 220. All right, so there's one, I'm not done yet though. I'm not done yet. So does everyone see to find another name for the point I can add or subtract 360 from it? We all good. All right, now I'm going to challenge you a little bit. What if I wanted to make the seven negative now? Remember, it would be what? On the direct opposite side. You remember how many degrees we stated from there to there on the direct opposite side? 180. So ready, if you want to change your R value, if you want to change your R value, you can add or subtract 180 instead. All right, so go ahead, go ahead, add 180. What do we end up with? 320. 320. Or it could also be, if I go negative 180, it could also be what? 140 minus 180? Negative 40. So here are four different options of where, what that point could also be called. You keep the R value, right? You keep the R value the same and add and subtract 360. You change the sign on the R value and add and subtract 180, okay? That's four different point, four different ways you can name the same point. 
So which one is L? What am I looking at here? Negative 7, negative 40 is a choice. Negative 7, 320. The only one that wasn't was negative 7, 220. So are we okay on how to find the same point, but four different ways? Let, let me know now because I'm going to change this to radians here in a second. Or did I? Or are we done? No, nope, we are. We're not done yet. One more. Hey, we all good on the rules on how to change a point. Rename a point, actually. All right, here we go. Now we got to do this in radians. And I don't want to convert back to degrees. All right, I don't want to convert back to degrees. All right, it's going to take, got to have you locked in for here because the math gets a little, little crazy here. All right, the first two ways I can name two new points. The first way I can name two new points is keep the R value the same, right? Keep the R value the same, but if I'm keeping it the same, what did we have to add and subtract? 60. 360 degrees, but mm, I'm in radians. So I got to do the, I got to add the 360 equivalent to both. Ooh, anybody remember that back in the day? 360 and two, two pi? Two no, nope, just two pi, just not two pi. All right. Hey. What? 360 degrees was equal to 2 pi. So what I'm going to need your help with is taking negative 3 pi over 4 and adding 2 pi to it. And again, all I'm doing is adding the 360 equivalent, but in radians. Ooh, how do we add those together? If you, t if you tell me negative pi over 4, you better get out of here. I can't allow you to graduate this. How do I add those two fractions? Get a common denominator, which would be what? Four, right? Get a common denominator, which would be four. Do I do anything to the negative three pi? No. Nope. And what are you going to multiply two pi by? Four, right? It becomes what? Multiply this one by 4. 8 pi. 8 pi. So I have negative 3 pi plus 8 pi. Negative 3 pi plus 8 pi. What do I end up with? 5 pi. 5 pi? Right? Yeah. So there's one point. It could be. Here we go. The second version. Keep our value the same, but now subtract 360, a.k.a. 2 pi. So now same thing, but now I'm going to do minus 2 pi. Now subtract it. Add and subtract 360, a.k.a. 2 pi. Still a common denominator of 4, but now you're going to subtract. Ready? Negative 3 pi minus 8 pi. Because right, you're still multiplying by 4 here. So what do you got for me? Negative 3 pi minus 8 pi. Negative 11. Negative 11 pi. Good, Tim. Yep. Add and keep the R value the same. Add and subtract 360 or 2 pi in this case. So everyone see two versions before I get to the next two. All right. We also said we could change the sign on the R value. But what do we have to add now if we do that? What did we add and subtract in the last problem? 180. Ooh, anybody remember the 180 equivalent? Pi. Yep. So now we're going to add and subtract pi instead. So negative 3 pi over 4. We'll add first plus pi. If you want to change the sign on the R value, you have to add and subtract 180. Okay, can you combine those for me? Negative 2, comma, this is over 1. Can you add those two fractions? Common denominator is still 4. 
Once you get the hang of the first one, the next three, not that bad. Still got to multiply that by four. So it's going to be in my numerator here. Pi. Will it be, you think? Yeah. Negative three pi plus four pi. One pi, yep. So there's one, a third point it could be. And then how do I find the fourth point now? How do I find the fourth point now? Negative two. Well, how do I find it now? Subtract. Subtract 180. Subtract pi now. Go ahead and multiply it by four, and what's my new numerator now? Negative seven, Negative seven pi, right? Negative three pi minus four pi. Yeah. <laughs> All right, now we got four points. Let's check which ones are listed. Two, negative seven. Nope, that's not listed. Two, five pi over four. Yep, that's we had that one. Negative two, and yep, we had that one, right? And then negative two, nope, we didn't have that one. We Wait, had the, this is oh, hold on, what? Ah, oh, shoot, I didn't, shouldn't have circled that, right? Because that ours is positive. Ne this one. There we go. <laughs> Add it, keep the R value the same, add it, subtract 360, change the sign, you got to add it, subtract 180. All right, that's it. Glad we got through that. Don't have to do it on Monday. It won't be your responsibility anyway.